First, I'd like to say before, uh, without uh, disrespecting your husband, that uh, you are one fine-looking judge. Most judges are old and wrinkled, and you got it going on. Well, 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 well. Okay. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Franklin says when he met Diane five years ago, Cupid put him on speed dial. They were compatible and comfortable, and he loved her zest for life. But as soon as they moved in together, Diane changed from fun-loving and easygoing to uptight and sexually conservative. I'm here today because I'm tired of my wife treating me like a child. I didn't sign up for this. I am done. I am here today because I am sick and tired of my lazy, good-for-nothing husband staying in bed all day, not getting a job, treating me with disrespect, flirting with women while I'm doing two jobs. I'm tired of it. Franklin says if Diane can't let loose and liven up, he is walking out. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Franklin Porter and Diane McKinnis. The two of you have been together for five years. You are currently living together but have no children together. Mr. Porter, you're bringing Ms. McKinnis here, seeking $6,300, which you say is the cost of equipment that you had to sell in order to contribute to the maintenance of the household, and we will talk about that momentarily. Before we do, however, I'm going to ask you to tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today. First, I'd like to say before, uh, without uh, disrespecting your husband, that uh, you're one fine-looking judge. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Porter. See what Ms. I McKinnon. <laughs> Fear not, it gets him nowhere. Most Mr. judges are old and wrinkled, and you got it going on. Well, 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 well. Okay. <laughs> but you still could be wrong. I Mr. Porter, what's happening with Ms. McKinnis? Well, you know, I'm a tree cutter. I do disaster relief uh -huh. work. We travel all over the country, and we primarily take trees off homes, uh, out of people's yards, so they get back to their lives after a disaster. Mm -hmm. I've done Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane Ike, and uh, ever since I've met her, uh, she don't let me go anymore. She wants me to stay home. She wants to be home before uh, it gets dark, and uh, I can't really work that way because work is out there, not, a, not in a small podunk town of Oklahoma. Ms. McKinnis, do you not let the man go do his job? <laughs> We tried that, but when he was gone, he didn't bring home any money, so I'm just feeding him money. He's having to eat, stay in hotels, and I'm sending him money, so we're losing money while he's gone. They don't pay him? That. I haven't seen any money yet. Ms. Ms. Mr. Porter, can you explain what's happening on the in financial disaster end? relief, I'm going to come to your house, and I'm going to make a bid. You're going to take the bid. A lot of times I'll go out, and there's older people, 90 years old, single mothers, and they have trees down just like everybody else, but they don't have money, so I do find myself doing five Some or six freebies, free jobs yeah. uh, every time I, I do take off. I good for you, Mr. Court. I, I, you know. And, and she is correct. I left last time to do the big storm uh, in Louisiana and Beaumont, Texas. And I took 5,000 with me and I did one job for 500. So I do see her point. Can you have a contract with the state or the county or I'm, like, I'm trying to make the man some you money? Can if the you, municipality you, or something? You can if you got a big company. I don't have 15 trucks and 30 employees. He can't do it. anything when he stays in bed all day. He's just in bed all day. He didn't try to get out and do anything. He just lays yeah, and baloney. stays in bed until 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's baloney because. I oh, have got not. depressed the last few months. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, because there isn't no work. So I have been hanging around the house a lot. Waiting for work to magically drop into his lap. He yeah. won't get out and try to get it. He's just waiting for it to he's come. He's waiting to for it to come to him. Yeah, I have he's waiting tried for the job ferry to come bring him a job. It doesn't work that way. I've knocked on doors. Uh, dogs have run me off properties. Out in the country where she lives, it's a lot different mm -hmm. than going to the cities. I mean, you're liable to get shot walking on people's no, property. Right. Miss, 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 yeah, I, 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 I understand what the problem is there, and we can address that momentarily, because I think that's something we can work on. Why don't you tell me what other concerns you have about your marriage, Mr. I mean, your relationship with Miss McKinnis? You know, she don't like any of my friends. I've recently uh, reconnected with an old buddy, 
and uh, he's been over to the house a couple of times, and he's a little different. He I'll, just we'll makes bad weird. decisions when he's with this person. I mean, he went, he just had to go out with him. I hadn't been out with my buddy in a long time. I'm just going to go over and watch the game. I didn't hear from him again until 3 o'clock in the morning. I started trying to call him at 10 every hour just to make sure he was still alive. He had gone to a karaoke bar with this buddy, paid for a cab with money that we don't have, bought drinks for pretty much everybody in, in the bar, bar with but money that we don't have. But it wasn't a party thing in the beginning. I was home. going to help him move into his new place. He moved into his new place and he was kind of excited to have me come over and help him move in. Of course we, he's excited. He knows he's going to pay for his booze. Then we he's started drinking a little bit. <laughs> we started drinking a little bit. You know, we ended up going to a karaoke bar and, and I wanted to take the cab because I didn't want to take her car and drink and drive in it, you know. So we took a cab over and the Which cab Which I appreciate back. the cab, you know. He didn't die, so, but, you so, know, shouldn't have gone. Beyond this, what are your concerns about Mr. Porter? Well, like I said, he just doesn't bring home any money. He stays in bed all day. He won't even get up and try. He, we made an agreement where I would pay for the bills, but he would buy just enough, work just enough. I'm not asking him to bring home a lot of money, just enough for groceries and for spending money, and he hasn't been doing it. Oh, he just well, Mr. Porter, we've been talking about you this whole time. Why don't you tell me what it is about Ms. McKinnis you don't like? She's only been with two guys in her whole life. And I've, you know, kind of uh, been with a few ladies, and I like to have a little bit of excitement. And sometimes she's... I don't she's, know which one y'all applauding for. Some, I don't even... <laughs> sometimes she's a little, you know, her skills are lacking in some areas, you know? <laughs> totally. Maybe that's because I'm tired from doing two jobs. Yeah, but... Mr. <laughs> Porter, are you looking for increased variety? In hang on increased frequency or increased freakiality? I think I like the last one. I want a little bit more action than just missionary position. Okay. <laughs> I'm when not I, talking about swinging off the chandeliers or anything. I think he is. Yeah, I think he you is. You know, but when I first met her, there's a lot of stuff she didn't even do. She has, I've been teaching her a few new tricks. Can you she has been coming around. She's been coming around, Come and I'm now. willing to I'm wait really on her. Go but it has to happen sometime, you know. Right. Now, no. now, now you, 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 uh, can you per persuade a little bit? I mean, just kind of work your way into it. Well, do you want to do something with a man that lays in bed until two and three o'clock in the afternoon? I don't think so. I'm sorry. I'm tired when I come home from the second job. I'm just waiting on you to get there, baby. Well, if you got out of work, I just have one job. When Divorce Court Continues, is Franklin cheating on Diane? We were sitting at the table together. This woman walks over, puts her back to me, looks at him. She knows I'm there, and says, hey, you want to come over and sit at my table? Have you been cohabitating for years and find that splitting up is as complicated as a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Diane McInnes, who is seeking a dissolution of her relationship because Franklin is lazy and doesn't contribute to the household. Is Franklin verbally abusive too? What does he say to you about your weight? He just makes little things like calling me chubby or what a, you know you look like a cute little hippo you know just not nice things ms mckinnis you've said that mr porter enjoys female attention oh my gosh from a variety I mean, you got of a sources little example why of don't right you tell here. me about that we were at a karaoke, oh, he loves karaoke. Well, I mean, and I do too, but I mean, he wants the whole, every, he's really good, so he gets all the attention from the women. We were sitting at the table together. This woman walks over, puts her back to me, looks at him, she knows I'm there, and says, hey, you want to come over and sit at my table? And he's just like, well, I'm with her. He didn't go, but it's not like, you know, I'm with my girlfriend, this is a person I love. It's just like, well, I'm with her, I can't go do that. And he just keeps talking to her. I mean, when I got home, I told him, we really appreciate you didn't go over there. But you could have at least, you know, gotten rid of her, let her know that you were with me, treated me with a little more respect. It was very disrespectful. Now, Mr. Porter, are you out there enjoying and flirting with the ladies and failing to show the woman that you're with the proper 
This lady that she's referring to came to our table. I uh -huh. didn't go to her table. And right. Every man likes a little bit of attention from women. Am I wrong, Bailiff Joe? <laughs> no, let, let, leave Joe alone. I mean, when a woman <laughs> no, looks at no, no, leave him out of this. I mean, that, and that's not the only time. I and mean, we were we were traveling around trying to get him work. So I went with him to try to get work. We didn't get anything anywhere we went. He was too busy, you know, with karaoke bars. Two young young women, young enough to be my daughter, just hugging all over him, having a good time. He was soaking it all up. He didn't get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's about what happened, huh, Mr. Morton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you enjoyed it, yes, but you're not doing anything wrong. I'm not sleeping with these ladies. Okay, now there's a, there's a lot of rules treat me with disrespect in between here. talking to and not sleeping with. Are you engaging in any of the behaviors in between? No, ma'am. Nothing? Nothing, nada. 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 Mr. Porter, I understand you have a problem with Ms. McKinnis's uh, current weight. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I've probably only mentioned her weight to her three times since I've known her. That's not true. What does he say to you about your weight? He just makes little things like calling me chubby or what a, you know, you look like a cute little hippo, you know, just not nice things. And I'm sorry, but look at the beer belly that's coming on him. He's been laying in bed. And his belly is growing by the day. I he have never had a beer bed. belly in my life. Oh, okay, I have been 6'5", 200 pounds my, high, my whole oh, life. Since I've lived with her, I got this. I'm kind of proud of it, to be Mr. honest Porter, with you. I understand that the work might be hard for you to get at this juncture. Uh, even though you're home, you don't do anything around the house. No. The only is thing he true? does is vacuum up the dog hair in one area and takes out the trash, but he won't put the trash bag back. He expects me to do that because that's women's work. I'm doing no, two no, jobs. No, no. He's doing no, nothing. No, 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 no. There's no, and he there's won't nothing. Do you know, specifically designed women or men work. Oh, when yeah, I take the right trash here. out, when I'm heading outside to put it in the dumpster, in the beginning, when I first met her, she would grab a bag out underneath the sink and put it in, and then when I came back, it was all ready to go. <laughs> now. The can stays out. It don't a bag don't get put in it. Because just, I don't stop my job. Uh, I work from the house on my like first job, and I don't stop my job to go in there and replace the trash. Seems for like it. to me that trash she stopped liner. working for this relationship. In the very beginning, uh -huh. she was just really, you know, I mean, making yeah. supper. No, now no, no. she wants me to take her out all the time. And if you don't take yeah. her out when you mention it, she falls apart. Oh, I start so watering true. up. So what do I do? I go oh. shower and I take her out. You know, I don't want to oh, disappoint Oh, my her. gosh. He's got the story wrong. It's like, you this tell is, me the story, this is McKinnis. one day he, he had gotten a little bit of money. We had a little extra money where we could go out and eat. He's like, just make us a light lunch because I'm taking you out to dinner. So all day long, I think I'm going out to dinner. That night, he's like, so what are you fixing for dinner? When divorce court continues, is alcohol fueling the demise of this union? He took the last of our grocery money. Went and got a six pack of beer. I didn't know he's taking the last of our grocery money to go buy alcohol. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Franklin Porter, who says he wants to end his union with Diane because she has stopped caring about their relationship. But is he the real problem? The cell phones get cut off, and he still hadn't done anything. I went in there, and I lost my cool. You know, you got to get out of bed. You got to get it done. You promised me, and you're letting me down. He got up and started singing karaoke. Mr. Porter, she says that, you, that uh, you might imbibe a little too much. What do you say about your alcohol consumption? Yeah, I does. really do. I like Jack Daniels and a couple shots after work. But you know what? I don't even touch a beer if I don't deserve it. And, how, and what I mean by <laughs> deserve it... Now, what do you... Yeah, what, do you, what does that is, You know, entail? working your butt off and cutting... You know, I, 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 tr I took down 115 trees the last Friday I was in Colorado last year on, in one day. Then I deserve a beer. Yeah, okay. But it's not the now way it works. Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not well, what That was last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, between this year and last year, how many Jack Daniels have you had? She hasn't let me go back to Colorado. Oh, that's where the money gosh. is. That's where the beetle kills no, going that's on. No, that's where I lost all my money when he was I in Colorado. I want to know how much Jack Daniels you've had between... Probably too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he took the last of and our I... grocery money, went and got a six-pack of beer, Sat there, came home. He just said, I'm going somewhere. I didn't tell me where he was going. I didn't know he was taking the last of our grocery money to go buy alcohol. And it's like, I'm just going to watch the game this weekend, get a little buzz, and then I'm going to get up Monday morning, and I'm going to get started on work. And I'm tired of this laying around, and I'm going to go out and get a job. Right. 
Well, guess what? He had a hangover Monday morning. Instead of sleeping until 2 or 3, he slept until 4 o'clock. Well, you know, she may then not... get out of bed. We may, that may have been the last of the grocery money for that week, but our pantry's full. Their fridge has something in it. There's stuff always in the freezer. It not wasn't always. the last money we was going to starve. But I was, you know, I was kind of... It was just having a tough day, and a couple shots at a basketball game is what I needed. And yeah, from all of his hard laying around the house all week. And I, I figured, you know what? Let's, let's just kind of get through this, and tomorrow will be a new day. Somebody's going to call, but my, my phone's going to ring. Yeah, it I, just hasn't happened. Nobody's called. I, I get it, I get it. Somebody tell me what the final straw is. Final straw Please. is, I, he told me he was going to pay the cell phone bill. We have to have that for my job, and in case a job magically jumps into his lap, he's <laughs> got to know about it. I have to have my And he told me he was going to take care of that one because I had to buy the grocery, so I'm going to get the cell phone bill. It's Friday, Saturday, the cell phone bill, the cell phones get cut off, and he still hadn't done anything. I went in there and I lost my cool. You know, you got to get out of bed. You got to get it done. You promised me and you're letting me down. He got up and started singing karaoke. <laughs> when divorce court continues, whom will Judge Lynn believe? She's going to lose her house and she's only since 93 if I don't come up with some cash. So I go sell a trailer or a chipper or a truck and give her the money. I said, I need this equipment to, you know, do what I do. And she says, well, I'll pay you back. So that's the money that's, that's a question. That's a lie. I never told him I'd pay him back, and I didn't ask him to sell it. He sold it because he didn't want to go get a job. Divorce Court returns with the case of Franklin Porter and Diane McInnes, who are ending their union after five years of togetherness. Mr. Porter, tell me about the $6,300 you say Ms. McKinnis, uh, should, uh, I should award you from Ms. McKinnis. Just like you've heard her say, things are going to be shut off and she's going to lose her house that she's owned since 93 if I don't come up with some cash. And the pressure is on. I mean, the, the, you could cut the, the air with a knife. It's so thick because she's walking around mad all the time. So I go sell a trailer or a chipper or a truck and give her the money. And, uh, and I said, I need this equipment to you know, do what I do. And she says, well, I'll pay you back. So that's the money that's, that's, that's a in question. That's I never told him I'd pay him back, and I didn't ask him to sell it. He sold it because he didn't want to go get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Mitten, I, didn't want to, I, I didn't want to get a job. Do I don't have, have a lazy Mr. bone in my body. Mr. Porter, if I had a job tomorrow, I would go to it. What do you have in your hand? I have a, a, a little statement here that shows what I've spent, what I've sold and given her to pay her, her, that, her mortgage, her car payments. Car that he drives in the house Thank he you, lives sir. in. <laughs> Car that's still in her name that I'm making payments on. I offered to put your name on there. You didn't want three chainsaws worth eighteen hundred dollars and a wood chipper worth forty five hundred dollars. You sold those. To... Yes, ma'am. Actually, them chainsaws are about six fifty a piece. Uh huh. Uh huh. And okay. The, the chipper was a five thousand dollar chipper. I've had to lose money by selling them quick. I got it. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Here we go. I know why you like him. <laughs> I get it. Lazy and all, I know why you like him. He's, he, he's funny. He's a joy to be around. He's a good time. Apparently, he's good at karaoke. <laughs> now, uh, and I don't think you're going to leave him. I really don't. I think you like him that much. I don't think you're going anywhere because you haven't got anywhere to go. <laughs> at what makes you happy. I get that. And she's making it, making it possible for you to work not at all until you find exactly what makes you happy. And you can't do that. I mean, I was supposed to be a doctor. Got to college, couldn't do the math. This is my backup career. You never know how things are going to turn out. So you got to pursue even when it isn't exactly what you want to do because you have to make money. Having said that, I will say this. I bet you, I bet you, you costs more than $6,300 a year to maintain. I bet it. <laughs> that if you put all the mortgage payments and the card notes and the food and the gas and the light and the electric and all of that that you consume, it might be a wee taste more than that $6,300 that you contributed. Hence, there will be no recovery in this matter. <laughs> it is so early. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Weeks after the show, Diane's prayers were answered. Franklin was called to help out in another tornado disaster and rescue. He's still there cutting down trees while Diane is back in Oklahoma cutting him checks. They are still together, or are they?